Hello there crew members and random officers, my name is Captain Geronimo and welcome to yet another episode on which we're gonna be playing Star Trek Online. In today's episode I'm gonna give you the Crossfield class Science Spearhead Refit Starship Review. Without any further ado, let's proceed with today's episode. Engage! The Crossfield Refit from the far future can be acquired by opening up Far From Home lockboxes. All you need are Far From Home lockboxes, master keys and a wagon of luck. Combine those three together and you just might get yourself a chance to acquire the Science Spearhead Refit. <laughs> With that being said, I wish you good luck. You can also try to find it on the exchange or purchase it by trading with other players. Now, let's take a closer look at Starship's customizational options. Crossfield class refit is perfect recreation of a hero ship, as seen in Star Trek Discovery Season 3 Episode 6, Scavengers. Discovery traveled from 23rd to 32nd century. After some adaptation period the ship was put into active service, its crew went to retraining and the ship has been upgraded to fit all modern standards. Available templates are Crossfield, Mirror Crossfield and Crossfield Refit class. Your available bridge options are 23rd Century Crossfield and Walker as well as all other standard bridges that you own. Window-wise you have several options to choose from. Crossfield types 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Crossfield Refit as well as types 6 and 0. Material options are as follow. Defiant, Discovery, Discovery era starship types 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Discovery era Terran types 1 and 2. Discovery refit. Galaxy, Intrepid, Annex, and Annex refit. Sovereign and Sovereign refit. Terran types 1 and 2. And types 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8B, and upgrade. By pressing Advanced Options tab, you get to customize ship's pattern and style. Patterns are standard, nothing special nor unique. However, on the style you can customize in between three given templates. Use this option to create your own perfect and unique looking starship variant. You can choose between having open or closed shuttle bay doors on all three given variants. If you were to set the patterns to the standard, which is Andromeda, and left side of a color to the blue and right to the violet, your ship will look like this. With some adjustments, you can make some wild looking starship color-wise, or you can settle for more uniformed appearance. And now, without any further ado, let us go into space. Neutronium alloy fibers, retrofitted programmable matter interfaces, detached nacelles, improved central processor, nano gel circuitry, state of the art cloaking device. These are just some of the upgrades that the ships of the future sport. Same as Constitution class Enterprise, Crossfield class received a massive refit, bringing it up to the standards of the time. Crossfield class Science Spearhead Refit is classified as a scalable Tier 6 Federation science vessel. This starship can be flown as soon as you finish game's tutorial mission, just like all other Tier 6 starships. If you're a brand new player or you just started a new character, as you level up through the game your ship scales up alongside with you, following you in terms of strength and your abilities. As it scales up, it gains more hull HP, console slots, weapon slots and more powerful bridge officer abilities as well as weapons. Starship mastery points may be earned immediately, however mastery as a system will not be active until you reach level 50. With the higher that level that you are once you get this ship, the less scaling will be required. So if you get the starship on level 65, no scaling will be needed. Scaling is in a direct link with player's level. For every 5 to 10 levels that you pass, your starship will unlock more and more features. If there is any confusion about the ship's scaling, here is a detailed table overlaid on the screen. If there is anything else that you have been wondering about the scaling, feel free to ask in comments. Federation starships, even the ones from the far future, come pre-equipped with standard equipment and weapons of the lowest mark, which is available at starships minimum rank. 
provided items are appropriate for the type of vessel and its place in history. It means you have a retrofitted Federation phaser weapons from 32nd century, as well as quantum torpedoes pre-equipped on your crossfield as soon as you take it out of the box. Those weapons are all set to mark infinite, which means that they too scale up alongside with your ship becoming increasingly more powerful. However, there is a catch. They cannot be upgraded, nor can be re-engineered. If you want to use upgradable and then re-engineerable variants of those weapons, you have to win them from the previously mentioned discovery, farm from home lockbox, or by trading them with other players, or looking for them on the exchange. Those phasers have a special proc, giving them a chance to recover recharge time for bridge officer abilities, providing an upfront burst of recovery and accelerating the recharge for a significant duration thereafter. Repetitive triggers of these effects provide an upfront burst again and refresh the duration of the overtime bonus. As an Admiralty card, Crossfield is classified as a 4-star rarity science card which comes with 37 engineering, 30 tactical and 59 science points. Starship's maintenance period is 18 hours and its special ability is addition to plus 8 of engineering and science points per every tactical ship that you send on Admiralty mission alongside with a Crossfield class refit. On level 65 you have 63,000 hull hit points. There are 4 forward alongside with 3 aft weapon slots. The forward slots can have dual cannons installed on them while aft slots are normal. You also have a secondary deflector slot which is pre-equipped with the deteriorating secondary deflector mark infinite. As stated before, you have top of the line cloaking device, but more about it very soon. Available bridge officer stations are Lieutenant Commander Tactical, Ensign Engineering, Lieutenant Science Cross Miracle Worker, Lieutenant Commander Universal, and Lieutenant Universal Cross Engineering. This ship can be additionally upgraded to the Tier 6 X unlocking an extra starship device slot, universal console slot, and the ability to slot an extra starship trait. You have 3 device slots, 3 tactical, 3 engineering, and 5 science, alongside with 1 universal console slots. Ship's modifiers are 1.4 for the hull, 1.1 for the shields, and 0.2 for the impulse. Crossfield's turn rate is graded as 11 degrees per second with inertia rating of 60. According to the Captain Seru, detached nacelles should give this starship better maneuverability and flight speed. Normal Crossfield, within game, comes with a turn rate of 10 degrees per second while Mirror Crossfield has the turn rate of 12 degrees per second. It seems that Terrans can outmaneuver this version of the starship, even with attached nacelles and it's just 9th century gap between these two. Ships of the future use strange looking warp cores that don't share any resemblance with the 24th century warp cores, so I will just assume that they are far better and more advanced. Ship is powered via the warp core, and it will provide you a bonus power of plus 15 to the auxiliary, plus 5 to weapons, shields and engine power subsystem levels. That warp core in combination with the new nacelles gives you access to the cyclical quantum slipstream drive, a built-in ability which allows you an improved sector space travel speed for 90 seconds instead of 30, and its cooldown takes only 30 seconds instead of regular 120 seconds. One cool feature about this starship is animation when you are about to use the transwarp. Instead of using standard ship's deflector to open a subspace rift, you start a spore jump sequence. Why would Discovery even need to use the transwarp when it can instantly travel anywhere where it wants? Even though there is no mycelial tech in this version of the starship within game, they've paid attention to the details, and I love attention to details. Before we keep on going with the review of this amazing starship, I would just like to do a short commercial break in here. Crossfield being a science ship in its heart, you will get a sensor analysis, which is an active toggle ability. While maintaining a sensor lock on a target, you gain a stacking effect that either improves the damage and power drain against an enemy or improves a healing directed towards an ally. This effect stacks every 3 seconds to a maximum of 6 stacks after 18 continuous seconds. To maintain the desired effect, player must hold the sensor lock on its target. 
Also, as a science ship, the Crossfield class refit comes with a built-in subsystem targeting abilities. After activating a subsystem targeting ability, the user will gain a 10 second buff, during which attacking an enemy starship with any form of energy weapon will cause a stacking power to that subsystem and will have a small chance of completely taking that subsystem offline. If the subsystem is taken offline, it renders all abilities that use this subsystem temporarily inert. For example, if you target the shields and take them offline, then target shield facings will go down. Have I mentioned that this starship is actually a full-on miracle worker? Well, if not, I guess I have now. <laughs> As a miracle worker, you have access to the built-in innovation mechanics. It requires activation of three bridge officer abilities corresponding to the colors on the innovation display window. Red stands for tactical, blue for science and yellow for engineering. By successfully matching the colors, will automatically trigger the available innovation effect for the next 10 seconds. After effect does its job, the innovation goes on for a short reboot. Then. One of six possible innovation effects will be selected at random each time when the innovation mechanic refreshes. Available effects are Instinctive Rerouting, Containment Layering, Heisenberg Decoupling, Plasma Conduit Purge, Ingenious Solutions, and Barkley Maneuver. The ship really features a lot of gizmos for a single starship, but we're not done yet. The Crossville class Science Spearhead Refit comes with a battle cloak which allows this ship to cloak during combat, granting stealth and a damage bonus upon decloaking. It has a unique cloaking effect, as seen in Season 3 of Star Trek Discovery. Starship comes with a mastery skill tree of a science vessel, which is comprised out of enhanced particle generators, advanced shield systems, enhanced restorative circuitry, reactive shield technology, and ship's trait, universal design. Each time you activate an ability for a universal console, your starship gets a boost of critical hit chance and critical severity. Each activation of this trait refreshes the duration of all the existing stacks, and you might get up to 5 stacks activated simultaneously. Do not forget that we have a universal console, Quayan Assault Craft, also known as a bookship. By activating this console, a Quayan Assault Craft may be launched from your ship's aft shuttle bay to come and aid you in the combat. The ship is built to damage and harass foes, is extremely immovable. It will remain in combat until recalled or disabled. If disabled, it will automatically recall itself and place the console on recharge. Upon launch, the Quayan Assault Craft will follow your target to the best of its abilities, damaging and harassing whatever foe that you are currently targeting. This agile and fast vessel is equipped with multiple phaser weapons, photon torpedoes, and abilities such as Smasher Assembly, Rock and Roll, and Grade 1 Cannon Rapid Fire. This console additionally provides a passive bonus to outgoing healing, maximum hull capacity, and recharge time for Miracle Worker Bridge Officer abilities. This console may be equipped aboard any starship in any console slot, without restrictions. Okay, yes! Now I'm done with the ship specs. And you know what? That was an impressive list of abilities and gizmos aboard one single starship. Configuration-wise, uh, and judging by the bridge officer station and console layout, we can say that this is going to be an extremely potent science vessel or a very good tactical ship with science touches. Ship's console is nice, Book's ship will constantly be there and fight alongside with you. It can take a lot of damage and it will actually do some damage to your enemies. Ship straight is good in theory, but it's possible to trigger it 5 times if you have signs built with a lot of universal consoles, like I do. Miracle worker abilities give you a big edge in combat. Taking everything into consideration, I would rate this starship as 8.5 out of 10. I think I could even pull out even more from it. Further testing is gonna be required, but I'm definitely sure I'm going to see it again one big video at the end of this year. And before we end this episode, I would like to give a special shout out to all of my members. Lieutenant Juniors, Rosary95, Captain Altman, and Lieutenant Seniors, K. Anderson, Darren Homer, and Ron. Thank you people so much for being here, sticking out with me during everything that happened to me. And thank you, just thank you so much. I love you all because you all are the best. 
Thank you so much for sticking with yet another Starship Review Crew. I hope you'd like it. If you did, please smash a like. Tell to this YouTube's algorithm, hey, I really like this guy, let's boost him up. Also, consider subscribing if you're new around here. My name is Captain Geronimo, this is what I do. Star Trek Online, ship reviews, gear reviews, mission walkthroughs, live streams, and many more. Uh, if you would like to financially support this channel, you can choose to become the channel's member. You will also get some cool perks. Just click on the join button down below and you will get a nice explanation of what can you get. And that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for being here one more time. I love you all because you crew are the best. Geronimo, out.